This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. One morning, the immortal artist Michelangelo came into the studio of Raphael, the painter, and began to study one of his early drawings. Then Michelangelo picked up a piece of red chalk and wrote across that drawing one single word in Latin, amplius, which means larger or greater. For Raphael's work was too cramped, too constricted, too confined, and Michelangelo the master saw that. God, the living God, likewise, looks upon the lives of human beings, looks upon your life, this moment, and writes in scarlet letters upon your soul, amplius, larger, greater, because that's what you can be. This great world needs great men and women, great in heart, great in soul, great in love and commitment. People who will dare to live up to what they really are. Begin to live as the son or the daughter of God you were born to be. Said Jesus, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. In ancient Greek mythology, the Bucentaur was a fabled monster half man and half ox. And yet there are multiplied millions of human beings who feel that way, that a great, heavy, shackled, splintered yoke rests across their shoulders. Selfishness, sin, hatred, fear, anger. Let God lift that yoke from your neck. Because God loves you. God forgives you. Know that in faith, that you are a son or daughter of God. You belong in this universe. And God has a wonderful will for your life, a plan for this planet, and a purpose for your very existence. So that every morning you can arise with a new sense of joy, a new sense of meaning in being alive, knowing at last who and what and why you really are, that you were born to glorify God, to live in joy, to live in genuine, authentic happiness, and this will transform the world, because after all, global problems are simply magnified individual problems or personal problems. When two neighbors can't get along across a picket fence in the backyard, how can you expect two countries, two nations, to get along across national borders? The great solution to the problems of this world is the solution of a spiritual renaissance beginning in the lives of individual human beings, beginning in your life, as you discover why you're really alive, as you find God to the satisfaction of your soul. That will be part of the transformation of this very world because humankind has a choice in this generation. Are we going to span the seas with intercontinental ballistic missiles or with intercontinental goodwill? Humankind has a choice in this generation. Are we going to set this earth afire with nuclear holocaust or with spiritual love for one another? The choice is inescapably, unavoidably before each one of us. And as this world changes, and as the world grows, it needs spiritual teachings more than ever before. We do not outgrow the need for simple, spiritual, sustaining truth. An elm tree, when it's young, needs water, certainly. But as it grows, it needs not less water, but more water than before. It does not outgrow its need for water. It increases in it. Some say that this scientifically and technologically growing world has outgrown its need for spiritual teachings, but not so. Like the elm tree, the more it grows, the more it needs. There is a need, a hunger, a thirsting, a yearning inside of you this very moment for the living truth of the living love of the living God for you, which can transform your life, which can save you from aimlessness and meaninglessness, and which can give you newness of life, that you may be spiritually reborn, that a renaissance may come in your life, a renaissance of meaning, power, a new victory, a new spring in your step, a new light in your eyes. You begin to live as the son or daughter of God, God created you to be. This world was created and designed to live as one great planetary family. Now with modern communication satellites, this half of the world can talk live easily to the other half of the world. The question is, does this half of the world have anything worthwhile to say to the other half of the world? Can we learn to get along as global villagers upon this earth, as brothers and sisters in one great spiritual family of God? That is the ultimate challenge, but it is a decision, it is a choice 
not merely the choice of the leaders of nations, but your choice, your personal decision as well, because what you make of your life depends upon your decisions, your intentions, your desires, your motivations within your heart and within your soul. Abraham Lincoln loved to tell the story of a man who heated up a piece of iron in the fire, but he couldn't decide what he was going to make out of it. At first he thought he would make a horseshoe, but then he reconsidered and decided to make a tongue bolt for his wagon, but after he'd hammered on that for a while, he started on something else. By this time, the iron was cooling, and he'd hammered on it so much it wasn't good for much of anything, so holding it up with his tongs and looking at it with disgust on his face, he finally thrust it hissing into a tub of water and said, well, at least I can make a fizzle out of it. Human life itself, your life, will feel like nothing but a fizzle if you don't personally make some fundamental decisions about what you're going to do with your life. And giving your life to the God who gave you your life in the first place, committing your will and your life to God, turning your life and will over to God, that is the greatest single decision you're going to make. You are hammering out your soul between the hammer of your decisions and the anvil of God's Spirit and the sparks fly with every hammer blow of choice. But the mightiest decision you can make is to say to God, Your will be done. As in the famous Lord's Prayer, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done. A kingdom is a realm of power in which a king holds sway. So, likewise, to enter the kingdom of God is to enter God's realm of power, to commit your life to God, to commit your energies, your will, your purposes to the energies, will, and purposes of God and say, it is my will that your will be done. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Not by somebody else, not just by the angels or missionaries or paid professional clerics, but by me personally. When you dare to pray that and say to God that you are willing and ready to go anywhere, do anything, and be anything that the living God requires that you go, do, and be, all things, all things will become as new for you. According to the paleontologists, there is one certain small marine invertebrate called the lingula, which has not changed in any perceptible way for some 400 million years years. And it must be the only thing that hasn't. Because everything else seems to be continually changing. And so must you. So must you be continually renewed in the Spirit of God. For truth is alive, not dead. There is one unchanging truth in all this world. That is the truth of change. Nations rise and fall like wave crests on an ocean. Armies march and battles are waged and even as new history is made, the ink of past history fades upon the yellowed and crumbling page. God alone changes not in his love, his mercy, his compassion. These are from everlasting to everlasting. God loves you with a love which will not let you go. God has been with you through everything you've gone through in your life. And God has power, peace, purpose, and newness. Not exterior newness but interior newness, where you really need it in your heart, your soul, your mind, to invigorate you with new enthusiasm, with new zest for being alive, for beginning to live as you've longed so long to live, as a son or daughter of God and a brother or sister to every person on this earth. It is an enigma, it is a paradox, that humankind have learned to walk upon the moon but have not yet learned what the prophet Micah taught, to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. And what does it profit people to walk upon the moon if we run from God, if we run from our spiritual destiny, your spiritual destiny, your reason for being alive, is to know God, to be empowered by God, to align and synchronize your mind, your will, and purpose with the mind, will, and purpose of the living God who created this universe. That will make your life and all things new. With airplane and jet travel, we are now permitted to fly around the world so quickly that people who cannot get along with people in Garden City, Kansas, or Bartlesville, Oklahoma, can now in record time discover that they can't get along with people in Calcutta, India, either. 
all our technological advance is to no avail unless we learn to live in love. The two great commandments which Jesus of Nazareth taught were the love of God and the love of others. You shall love the Lord your God, he said, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the concept that this planet was intended to live as a family, the family of God, black and white and red and yellow and every hue and shade between that we are children of God, we are kin to the Creator. That invests all of existence with new meaning, new zest, and new purpose, which you can discover in living faith this moment, this very instant, if you will but have the faith to claim this truth for your own. In the midst of all the external change upon this earth, the great need for your life, the great need for every life, is internal transformation. Be you not conformed to this world, it is written, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Every few years now, it becomes necessary, according to the cartographers, to redraw the maps of the world. More and more new nations are becoming independent. But what of your mental map? How many people feel inwardly independent, authentically free in spirit, with the liberty, the liquid liberty of enlightened sonship or daughterhood with God? Yet there is one kingdom not on any map. It is not on any map because no map could possibly hold it. It is too large. It stretches from everlasting to everlasting, for it is the kingdom of God. And if you will seek, above all, to do the will of God, you may come into this kingdom of God with power and purpose. You are born beloved in the family of God, but by choice you enter into the kingdom of God in fullness and in power when you choose to do the will of God, the God who loves you so, who has loved you since you were born, chiseled in stone upon the great city gate of Siena, Italy. There is this inscription, Siena opens its great heart to you. And the message of this spiritual renaissance broadcast is simply this, so does God. God, the living God of this universe, opens his great heart to you. You are infinitely loved by the infinite God. Born to live as the son or daughter of God you really are in living faith. And if you will have the faith to claim that truth this moment, all things, all things will become new to you. Write to us, will you? at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell that mailing address, Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.